Hello guys, this is the Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Zombies video. So let's go over the last few teasers that we have gotten for the DLC 4 map which is going to be based off of the Soviet Omega Russian facility in Ukraine based off of the campaign mission Red Light Green Light. So today a lot of people were expecting a Season 6 roadmap. Unfortunately we have not gotten one just yet. We might be getting one potentially tomorrow or next week but we will be getting more season 6 information very very shortly since it is going to be releasing just a few weeks away now on the 6th slash 7th of October. So expect a trailer and more detailed information on the horizon. So last week Trey posted this intel from Requiem from Grigori Weaver addressing the team saying this is your target. Sergeant Kazimir Zykov 40 years ago he sacrificed himself and shut down the particle accelerator at Project End Station, D Machina, closing the portal to the Dark Ether. This is what we see within D Machina's intro cutscene. Then in November of 1983, Omega reopened it. Now they are going after him. Zykov is the single most intelligence asset Requiem has encountered. He has unparalleled knowledge about the Dark Ether and he knows how to defeat the Forsaken. If Kravchenko succeeds and takes him into custody, we lose Zykov for good. You must locate and extract him before Omega can. He's been a part of this from the beginning, let's bring him home. So it seems like the premise of a DLC 4 taking place in Sight Anna is going to see Requiem and Omega racing head to head against who will rescue Zykov from the Dark Aether first, as Omega have built a machine thanks to Dr. Peck that is going to be used to try and free Zykov. The thing is though, I really don't understand why Weaver and Requiem are taking this bait here because it does really seem like Zykov is manipulating both Requiem and Omega as we've seen from the pieces of Intel and pretty much everyone else who has been within the Dark Aether for an extended period of time has either died or become mutated and corrupted. So there's kind of no real way that Zykov would have managed to survive for this long. So I think that it's very evident that probably at some point Zykov most likely either died or has mutated into some sort of elder god or some sort of monster in the dark ether. So right now there's really only a few possibilities for Zykov. The first one is probably the most likely and that is that he's probably dead and the Forsaken is mimicking him to try and manipulate Requiem and Omega to freeing the Forsaken so that it can try and consume the regular world. Alternatively I have seen some people speculating that Zykov could even be the Forsaken himself. Maybe he just was in there for such a long period of time and he mutated into the Forsaken. After all, he does have a Russian accent when you hear him as the Forsaken is the announcer voice in the game. Bring them. Alternatively, Zykov has mutated into another Elder God and is helping the Forsaken or potentially even wants to battle against him. Or maybe Zykov is just Zykov. But I really think this is the least likely option, especially because a lot of the onslaught intel in Cold War Zombies does show how the Forsaken mimics certain characters to try and manipulate people into freeing him from the Dark Aether. And I think this is what we are seeing with Zykov as well. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you think Zykov is the Forsaken himself? He's dead and the Forsaken is mimicking him. Do you think he's mutated into some sort of other monster? Or do you think that Zykov is indeed just Zykov? Which would be the biggest troll ever considering how sketchy he is. It really doesn't make any sense that Zykov would just be Zykov in all honesty. But yeah, I just don't really understand why both Omega and Requiem have fallen for the bait. Because it seems so obvious that he is so sketchy. Why are they falling for this? It just seems way too obvious to me. Like, are they really that stupid? Surely not especially when they both have knowledge on the Forsaken. Requiem seems to have more than Omega though. Why would Weaver be siding with Zykov unless he's gotten orders from the director himself which we believe to be Eddie the new incarnation of Richtof in and Eddie the director seems to have a much better idea of what is going on. He has this plan with Project Janus and Samantha and we don't really know what that is just yet and whatever this grand scheme is and this plan is which is probably something to do with the Forsaken whatever the director is 
up to, he has a better idea of what is going on. So it wouldn't really surprise me if the director does in fact know that Zykov is most likely just a trap, but he is going along with it anyways for some sort of plan that we are unsure what the end goal is just yet. But I'm sure we will get the director revealed in DLC 4 to be Eddie. I think that's probably going to be probably the climax or one of the climaxes of DLC 4. By the way, let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think the DLC 4 map name is going to be? Because we have no idea just yet, and this is the first map where it's yet to leak, and hopefully it stays that way. Also, we are going to be seeing a new perk with DLC 4. There is going to be a perk machine for death perception coming as well, but there's another perk coming. Now, we're not sure which that is. Obviously, we have the Dark Aether jingles of Double Tap and PhD Flopper in the game, but it does seem like most likely Double Tap has been cancelled since we saw Death Perception instead, so maybe PhD Flopper is going to be the final perk. Alternatively, we might see a completely different perk. Maybe both of them have been scrapped a long time ago. Maybe we could see another perk from Black Ops 4 even brought back, but with some changes, thanks to the new skill tier upgrade system. We did get this other piece of intel from Requiem, which is a memorandum for the Requiem Cena staff, and this is coming from the director regarding Maxis being approved for Operation First Domino. So the director says, after consulting with Dr. Gray and Officer Weaver, I have decided to approve Maxis. Over the last several months, she has learned much about her powers and how to control them. She is ready. So if you've been paying attention to the intel in the game, the director has been brutally interrogating her and forcing her to do really awful things to basically control her and get used to her powers. And since she's not really fully in control of them, and the director has basically been putting her under extremely stressful circumstances to try and get her to nurture her powers and become better equipped with them and better understand them. So it has meant that the director has been a very, very cruel person in doing so, but I think that the director does have a greater good plan. He seems to be responsible for everything that happened with Requiem, and as I was saying earlier, it does seem like he has a good idea of what is to come. So I think that he is setting Samantha up to do something with the Forsaken. She is probably going to be the key to stopping the Forsaken, because I'm guessing that Omega and Requiem on their own just can't really stop it. Omega and Requiem are going to face against trying to free Zykov. I'm guessing the Forsaken will then escape. Requiem and Omega will team up and try and defeat it, but Samantha will be the one to maybe use her powers to seal the Forsaken in the Dark Ether or even kill it. As we've heard from the intel from Zykov, Zykov has been trying to manipulate both Requiem and Omega into trying to capture the Forsaken as opposed to kill it, which was their previous goal. And that just makes him seem even more suspicious because it does seem like Zykov is wanting us to capture it because if we try and capture it, of course the Forsaken will just overpower us. Trying to capture it and harness its powers and experiment on it is just not even worthwhile. It's just a complete losing battle and it's a complete trap. But yeah, the Forsaken is probably going to be the final boss on the map, I would assume. It goes on to say, unfortunately, she has not been approved to return to Requiem at this time and will fulfill her obligations from blank where my team can monitor her and ensure she is not at risk of blank. She may not be in the field, but rest assured she has a role to play as blank and blank. I know you have questions and I appreciate your patience through this time. I understand what she has come to mean to you, and you can only want what is best for her. Just know that blank, she is safe. So yeah, although the director has been torturing her, I do think that is for the greater good. I think the director basically is playing the role of an anti-hero. He's not necessarily good or bad, but what he is doing is for the greater good. The thing is though, the director has gotten pleasure out of interrogating and harassing Samantha, so he clearly likes it for some weird reason. So I wonder what the reason for that is because the director seems to have memories of the old Ether storyline since he does seem to be Eddie. So he remembers things that Samantha can't because she has amnesia and seemingly can't remember most of the old Ether storyline. She kind of has slight little memories here and there pop in, but I think the director has a much more clear idea of what went on in the old Ether storyline. So is he envious of Samantha? Does he want revenge for some weird reason? I'm not exactly sure. Eddie did witness a lot of really traumatic events events within the Ether storyline. He saw Maxis get eaten by Dr. Monty. He saw Samantha shoot Nikolai in the head. So as a young child, he was exposed to all of that. So it's no surprise that he is messed up in the head now. And maybe that is the reason why he seems like a very dark character. But he doesn't seem the same as Richthofen. I think this character is going to be very different from the Richthofen's Primus and Ultimus that we saw before. He's basically a new 
new character at this point with some resemblances to Richthofen, but for the most part, he's a basically a new character. He seems very different. We did also receive this, and Trey captioned it, new horrors have emerged from the dark ether. So we can see that there is the portal, the same one that we saw from Firebase C. So basically, there's going to be different portals around the map to help us travel. And there is a new creature that looks very similar to the Magwars. Of course, this isn't a Magwa though. The Apothecans and the Keepers were sent into the Dark Aether on Tagda Totem. Well, we believe they actually merged back to one, but anyways, basically, they don't exist anymore. The reason why it resembles the Apothecans and the Keepers is because they were sent into the Dark Aether, but then further corrupted and mutated to form new creatures. So there's a lot of things in the Dark Aether that do resemble the Apothecans and Keepers, but aren't really that. We do have the Plague Hounds, which heads do look like the Apothecans and the Keepers. But yeah, this is not an Apothecan or a Keeper. There are new factions in the Dark Aether now that have formed as they are battling against each other. And even though there's some resemblances to the old storyline, I think the Dark Aether kind of has imprint memory in a way, where it does kind of repeat different patterns. And that's why we are seeing different creatures come about that are similar to the old, even though they are not directly the old. They just came about from remnants of the old, if that makes any sense. We do have old intel from a while ago that talked about Barbara mutating into a crocodile-like face and stuff like that with sharp claws. So maybe this could literally be Barbara that we saw within the intel, one of the lost souls from a while ago. But I'm not exactly sure. We did see with the mimics, even their head really resembles the same head that we see here. But yeah, this does seem to be like a Nova 6 Magua. We can see gas emitting from it and it does appear to have some sort of tail. So this creature might be very fast, but it seems like it's only got two heads, maybe three. It's kind of hard to make out because it is black and white. There might be a third one on the right. I can't really make it out though, but it might just have two heads. So it might be similar to the Magua where you aim for its mouth when it opens. But you can see that out of its mouth, a tongue is sticking out, or at least it looks that way. As I was saying, it is a little bit hard to make out because it is black and white, but this is probably going to be the new dog zombie, basically. The new max ammo round. And I wonder how this is going to be. I do wonder what the Forsaken is going to look like as well, whether it is going to somewhat resemble Dr. Monty or the Shadow Man, or whether it's going to resemble the Apothecans and the Keepers, because all the creatures we've seen in the zombie storyline keep on resembling them. But yeah, this monstrosity looks very, very creepy. There is a marking on his left arm that some people are saying could be one of the runes. That is this new language that we're going to learn about in Vanguard Zombies, which is a prequel to Cold War Zombies. I did think that when I first saw it, it could be that, but now looking closer at it, it does look like they're just lumps or boils, and it's probably not a rune or symbol. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what this boss actually is, because there's not really much to make out from this image that we've gotten. And I wonder how many portals are going to be on the map. Since the mission Red Light Green light has areas outdoors and stuff like that. This is probably just going to be the way to make your way around from the different sections without having to actually travel there, as it's probably not going to be a direct route to some locations. But I'm looking forward to seeing the trailer to see what it's all about. To conclude this video, I just want to let you guys be aware that this video has been kindly sponsored by Big Farm Story. Build your dream farm with your friends and animals in Big Farm Story. Grow crops, tend your fields, craft and explore the world in this farming adventure. Meet new friends around each corner, shape your own community, and have fun writing your own story. Get away from the noise and bustle of city life and escape to a living and breathing farm of your very own. When your grandpa mysteriously gifts you his old farm, it's your time to rebuild it to its former glory. Plant, harvest, and tend your fields, and take care of your animals. This is your chance to build the farm of your dreams, discover a small village surrounded by nature and peace. Meet new friends around each corner, learn about their unique personalities, and shape your own community. The game now allows for full access thanks to the great feedback of their community. Big Farm Story is pure farming joy with no microtransactions, which I'm sure you're going to be very happy about. As you arrive on your grandpa's farm, you find it in an awful condition. Buildings are crumbled and fields are overgrown, the farm is abandoned, and your grandfather has disappeared without a trace. Roll up your sleeves and grab your watering can, it's now your time to step up your farming skills and restore the farm of your childhood dreams. Search for your grandfather's tracks in your own story and rebuild the derelict farm to its former glory. Harvest organic vegetables, gather resources and craft your way into the hearts of your farm's neighbours as you follow their requests and storylines. You can also join the adventures of Big Farm Story together with your friends, make friendships with other farmers from all over the world 
world and help your friends on their own farms. You can customize your house to make it your home. Find your own style and be creative. Apply your personal touch and design your own unique farmhouse with an exciting range of furniture and decorations to collect and choose from. Level up your character with a variety of skills to aid you in your adventures. Gather stickers while following the story and choose your preferred skills your character should learn. You want to become the best farmer or do you want to bake the most yummy cookies? It's your decision whether to boost your crafting, farming or other skills depending on your playstyle. Take care of your lovely farm animals and raise chickens, cows, alpacas and more. Breed animals together to find rare breeds, nurture and pet all kinds of adorable animals, get your very own pet and take your furry friend everywhere. Your little companion will always be there to show you some love. Meet the villagers, be a beloved member of the local community, meet all unforgettable characters with all their energetic personalities and exciting stories to share. Become close friends with the villagers, Benny, Sam and all their cheery friends are waiting for you. Explore a big farm story filled with extraordinary farm adventures, be curious and discover a peaceful world full of treasures and discoveries. Enjoy the breathtaking scenery and landscapes, spend a relaxing afternoon gathering wildflowers or go mushroom picking in the woods. So yeah, if this game sounds good to you, you can check it out right now on Steam via the link in this video's description. What's more is that the game is currently 25% off until the 27th of September, so make sure you do not miss out on this amazing deal. So yeah, thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you're not know here for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.